With your sunny In terms chin. of unexplained ones as well. Like, oh no, mine has a very specific reason <laughs> behind it. <laughs> He's always he's always wound me up. Yeah, and he's not an obvious one. Like you know, mm. he's not he's not your obvious. Well, he's got Scullthorpe. There was plenty of other people in that same. Well, there was Long that there was Cunningham, and there was Scullthorpe you know. and all sorts. Well, Scullthorpe never wound me up actually. You know, I always respected him a lot for what he could do. See what from current current day mm. in Super League. Oh, I've got outside of Super League. Yeah, NRL Michael Ennis really gets on my tits. Yeah, yeah. Like I, can I can't fucking that. stand the blow. It's his face. Yeah. I don't like his it's face. His, it's his yapping all the time. And I suppose that leads you to think of people like Danny Brough and Danny Maguire and mm. um, John Wilkin and people like that. But yeah. I respect them all in a way that I just don't respect Michael Ennis. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I'll probably say Michael Ennis. What about you? Um, yeah, well, I gave this some thought, and to be honest with you, and I don't know, because um, I'm trying to stay within what is applicable to my club because there's no point in me picking out Leeds players or what have you because they wouldn't come to the Bulls and it's not necessarily I just want to stay within the Championship so I've gone for Gaz Hock because I slag him off all day and every day but I think if he was our boy you've never read his book you'd get off. You, you don't know the real Gareth Hock I, I clearly don't I clearly don't know the real Gareth until you've done that dot to dot you'll yeah. never really know Gareth Hock but yeah so he's, he's kind of the personification of that Lee team that obviously they're our main kind of well not really our main rivals but you know they're up there they should be our main rivals so yeah Gazok or that oh, fat one that do you know what through. no one winds me up more in the championship than that fucking McNally. winger at Lee oh which one uh, not not K right Tom oh what's his name is it Tom? It begins with a H, his surname, and I can't think of it off the top of my head now. Yeah. Higson, is it? Yeah, Higson. Yeah, for some reason, he does my head in. Winger. Yeah, I know you Whenever mean. I've seen him play, he does my head in. I yeah. don't know why. I, d- I can't explain yeah. it. And Greg McNally. I don't like Greg McNally. I don't like his ratty face. I quite like Greg McNally. Mm, there you are. Weird, yeah. There you go. So that's that's so, that's, that's, yeah, that's I'm guessing, covered out, yeah. I think lots of other people will get in touch with us now, and yeah. uh, we'll see how that goes. There you go. There's Fantastic. plenty of people to hate out there, though, isn't there? In a... You know, respect driven. In a love to hate kind of way. Um, Alan Walker got in touch. Mm. He told us that um, Elwa. Eloy rhymes with boy in Catalonia. In Catalan. Right. Well, then for the Catalan in, dragons. But in, fr- in French, it's Eloy. So we were. Neither of us were. No, in French, it's Elwa, he's saying. I said, is it Eloy? Sorry, Elwa. Yeah, my version is yeah. the French version, your version is the Catalan version. The place for the Catalans. But well, I, don't know only one like in, I don't know if Alan's coming at this from a living in Spanish, Spanish Catalonia rather yeah, yeah. than French Catalonia. I don't know how much the dialect changes over the over the Pyrenees. Mm. But um, I, I just think we're we, going to have to tweet. Wrong. We're going to have to tweet him, aren't we? Well, look, how, how about we base it on who's had physical contact with him? That's not true. We can't go around asking cheerleaders what they think the pronunciation. No, oh, you I, mean you? Me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way we decided it. No, that just puts that just puts a slant on it. I uh, think he also biased. says that uh, Moritz is the only commercial beer that he can drink south of the mountains. That was one of my recommends, wasn't it, last oh, week? Yeah, he said yeah. all the others contain corn, their shit beer. Uh, should never put corn in beer, only put corn in chickens. That reminded me of our rice conversation with Warren at the um at the what's that pub called that we went to for that beer tasting thing? Oh the, at the uh, host uh, house. At the host house and that's on s- Spinningfields, in Spinningfields, yeah, and he told told us about how Budweiser was made brewed through rice yeah. rather than wheat and yeah. barley, and, and it was basically dog shit. It. Yeah, just just watery and ricey. There you go, um, Doctor Bob. He got in touch. He said, "My brother has got a dog called Sam, except when it's at our house, when he's called Tickle because their Labrador is called Tess. Oh, he's beautiful Labrador. Tess well. and Tickle. He sent a picture of Tess. She's with gorgeous. some sunglasses on. Yeah, yeah, cracking looking dog." I've got a soft spot for labs. <laughs> all right, all right, modders, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't leave me alone with it. No, it Colin... looks like a good dog. I used to have a black lab, that's all, so, you know. Colin Render got in touch with a couple of uh, added puns to the Danny Test tickle. Oh, fantastic. Uh, he said he should go on trial at Wakefield mm-hmm. to play with Nick Scrotum and Dick Owen. There you go. Uh, yeah. Enjo- enjoyable. Enjoyable punnery. Good stuff. Absolutely. John Paget. Right, yeah, so another an email to round off the shout-outs and feedback as well. If you want to get in touch with us e- on email, it's superleaguepod at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Um, John said, I just thought I'd write about two things. Firstly, about Sean Lunt. According to the reports at the time, Leeds tried to sign Lunt after his loan period, and Lunt also wanted to stay at Leeds, but unfortunately... Lump was on a very good contract at Huddersfield, so as Uncle Gary's pockets are deep and his arms are short, (laughs) 
sounds like other chairman I know, yeah. um, they couldn't agree terms. This was, after all, how Wigan got Mark Caldwell's from us, having to have these pay structures, which he breaks for no man, unless... Unless old Caddick's having a little bit of backhanders. Finish your time at Carnegie, lad. Yeah. We'll see you right. Yeah. Um, anyway, secondly, as for McDermott getting sacked... I'm sure you can criticise clubs that sort out lucrative rugby union contracts <laughs> through lack of negotiation skills for Second, their wingers. That's No, I'm talking about Kevin Sinfield ending his career on a nice deal at Carnegie, you'd imagine. You yeah. know... And then the contract is going to get after to just exist. Um, anyway, secondly, as for McDermott getting sacked, don't forget he's not on your standard sports contract, but on an open-ended contract, more like you're getting a standard job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so he's on just a just a work contract, like like you or I. Makes him out of the sack. Or he can't be bought off, can he? They can't just pay up the remaining term of his contract, can they? No, but that's what happens in a sacking in very common. It's not necessarily for like gross misconduct. But you would have it? you would have parameters in there in terms of performance expectations, and then you could have a formal warning for you know losing at mm. home to Hull KR, and then get a second formal <laughs> warning for losing at home to, to Wakefield, to Wakefield. Or, or the other way around. What do you yeah, get if you lose away to Wakefield and fail to register any points? Is that like um, a final written warning? I think you, you just. After COVID, a lot of bombing around. <laughs> from what I've heard. Fair enough. But we'll 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 get to that later on. Fair enough. I have got one uh, one final shout out or a bit of feedback to crowbar into the show, and it flies in the face of your your cut off point. But I felt that since it won an argument or a discussion for me, that I would I would crowbar it in anyway. Uh, Bruiser was kind enough to get in touch and to let us know that the CN Tower rotates once every seventy two minutes. Right. There's no way you sat in a restaurant for seventy two minutes. You got starters and the dessert. <laughs> Mate, Captain Indigestion, you know where to do that. Did I at any, po- did I at any point say that I managed a full rotation, or did I just say that I know it rotates and I was in a restaurant there? Fair, fair, I didn't put any time frames on fair it. Fair shout, Thomas. Okay, that's the feedback and shout outs taken care of. Let's take a look now at news from around the world of rugby league. So, two news from Rugby League this week. We start with some sad news that Rugby League Hall of Fame member and former Great Britain star Mick Sullivan has died at the age of 82. Sullivan played for Huddersfield, Wigan, St Helens, York and Dewsbury in the 1950s and 60s. The winger scored 208 tries in 390 games and won two World Cups with Great Britain. Sullivan shares the record of the most Great Britain test caps at 46 and was involved in in record-breaking transfers to Wigan and then to Saints. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2013. Mick Sullivan was one of the greatest rugby league players ever to play the game, RFL Chief Executive Officer Nigel Wood said. The RFL would like to offer their sincere condolences to his family and friends at this difficult time. So yeah, very, very sad um, for his family and what have you. 82 is a good innings, and but it's, it's always a shame when these legends of the game kind of shuffle off this mortal coil, isn't it? It gives us a chance to reflect on what was an absolutely outstanding career, mm. you know, um, all the things you just said then. Yeah. There's not a lot of people who could speak to the same sorts of things, the two World Cups, the two record transfer fees, and that's before you get into the influence he had on on the sides he played for, particularly those Wigan and Saints sides, I yeah. suppose. Absolutely, um, and, and that he was playing his trade in a time where the interchange bench wasn't a thing and it was you played for... 80 minutes, it was, you know, 390 games is, is, is no mean feat by today's standards, but to uh, to have achieved it in the 50s and 60s is uh, is quite something, isn't it? Definitely. Okay, uh, Huddersfield, moving on then. Huddersfield Giants have signed Warrington winger Gene Ormsby on a one-month loan deal, so that's in an effort to alleviate their injury concerns out wide. What's happened to Jamie Foster? Uh, his trial period ended. Um, and, and that was it, and that was that, was it? Yeah, I don't recall uh, they got Gene Ormsby in, haven't they? That's what we're talking about, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I know, but it does, one doesn't necessarily preclude the other. I just didn't know if you were... I think they started to get some players back, mm. and they signed um, Braley, and, and so I don't know if there's maybe yeah. uh, cap room issues or, or what um, on the back of that. So I just think... They could have done like a barter agreement, couldn't they, if, if Foster does everyone's air, and they, you know, let him play. Like a third party contract. Exactly. It's not Paramatta, so. No, Fairfield Giants. I'm assuming we might, we may get to that later on. Um, no, we I don't. Think Aussie, I don't even talk about the Aussie rugby league. Uh, okay, uh, Witness Vikings sent Stefan Marsh 
has surprisingly signed a new two-year contract with the Super League side. Yeah, proper witnessed himself up, hasn't he? More surprisingly, however, is that Reese Hambry has signed a three-year extension to his current deal at Witness, taking him through to the end of the 2019 season, which is very, very sensible. I just feel like they've, complete, they've completely broken their uh, their own in-house contract structure there, and I think it's, it's it's obviously what's to blame for the recent run of poor results. Do you think so? Yeah, I think it's absolute uproar has been caused of someone getting a three-year deal, not a two-year deal. There's just a lads outside Dennis Betts' yeah. office. Saying, where's my third-year dickhead? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Probably not. <laughs> Reece Reece Hanbury's been a very good player for them a player that I always said Wigan should have signed to replace Sam Tompkins Um, so you know I mean I was happy with Bowen in the end but as it stands you know he is a good player uh, Stefan Marsh has, has had a good season when, he's, when he was fit and his his injury is one of the ones that's coincided with the dip in form him Hep Cahill players like that unheralded but yeah. Had great years up to the point they got injured. That's it. Okay, Casper Tigers centre Jake Webster has extended his contract until the end of 2017. Webster, who's 32, joined the Tigers from Hull KR for the 2013 campaign. Uh, forward Lee Jewett is leaving Castleford at the end of the season when his contract expires to play in Australia. Jewett has signed a one year contract with the Townsville Blackhawks, the feeder club for the North Queensland Cowboys. So good luck to Lee Jewett sorting a life out for himself in Australia. That's a, it's a strange one, but it's not. A, it's not a, um... Averse to getting around, has he? He played in France, France didn't he, for a, while, for a couple he, of yeah. years, yeah, That's it, or a so year and a half or so. No, Crow, I like a lot. Of, I like. I think it's you know to be commended that he it will expand his horizons in that sense. Yeah, and he's not going to glamorous Australia either, is he? He's going to rural North Queensland. Yeah, so. but in his stage of his career, you'd think a Super League gig would be. Well, he just wants to a experience a different. Of his talents just wants to experience stuff. different quality of life, different well, style of life. Hey, I mean, you know, after the scare they had with the kids and stuff last year, maybe it's a different perspective on things. ADM kind of attitude to things. Exactly. Okay. Forward Mitch Achurch has confirmed that he'll be leaving the Leeds Rhinos at the end of this season. Achurch is off contract at the end of the year and has been told by Leeds that he will not be re-signed. The Australian has yet to decide where he will stay in the UK, uh, where he runs a gym, or whether or not he'll head back to Australia. Halifax have handed three reserve grade players first team Just contracts. on HH, sorry. sorry okay. I don't think there'll be too many Leeds fans sad to see him go. I think they've, yeah. ne- they've never really felt like he hit the high notes. No. There. I think that's a fair I think that's a fair thing to a fair, a fair comment to be honest. I still think he's got something to offer if you've got to play more regular rugby, mm. but we'll see. Yeah. Okay, Halifax have handed three reserve grade players first team contracts. Brandon Moore, Elliot Morris, and James Woodburn Hall have all signed new terms with the club after impressing head coach Richard Marshall. The trio are the first three players from Simon Griggs' reserve grade that have made the breakthrough. Both Moore and Morris made their first team debut against Pilkington Rex in the Challenge Cup, whilst Woodburn Hall starred in the opening three reserve grade matches. So, congratulations to those three young men. Yeah, Moore came through at cast, didn't he? Mm. Um, and I think he might have been the Academy Player of the Year yeah. last year. Um, Woodburn Hall, his name is familiar to me. He he was at London. I was going to say he's in the relegation South. year. Yeah, and then he went and had a year or a bit of time out um, playing for the Leeds student oh. uh, team. Oh, there you go. Um, when he went to university, and I think he's still at university and combining That's that hard. with a part time. Contract with a part-time club, yeah. Fair play, so good luck to all three of those. Ferris and Rovers have become the latest team to remove their reserved side from this season's competition. The club has confirmed their withdrawal, citing a lack of regular fixtures as one reason for their disbandment. They are the second championship club to leave the reserve scene, with Sheffield being forced to disband after missing out on Tier 2 grading. Yeah, that's not great. I mean, positive story on the Halifax youngsters being promoted mm-hmm. and then a negative one to follow it up this reserve team thing it's just not it's just not got itself in order yet has it really unfortunately no. which is a shame yeah exactly but I mean it, there's a, I think there's a, a wider and longer conversation to be had about reserve grade rugby league generally isn't there um, just in terms of the sporadic nature of it and, oh yeah definitely you know the, the fact that it's, it's it just doesn't paint the sport in a great light that we can't get our fucking carts in a line and operate a reserve grade. But not everyone wants it because, you know, it's Leeds have already got two reserve teams playing in mm-hmm. West Yorkshire that they can send players off to yeah. quickly. Well, then there's an even bigger conversation you have about dual registration and things yeah. like that as well, isn't there? Yeah, it's, it's, it, it is a bit of a, a quagmire, a bit of a mess. If we do it now, we could have another three-hour show. Let's move on. Okay, the RLEF has confirmed <laughs> that the Hellenic Federation of Rugby League, I presume that's Greece, mm-hmm. 
Thank God, because it sounded a bit intergalactic, didn't it? The Hellenic Federation <laughs> uh, of Rugby League has been suspended indefinitely. You've been